thank you for being here today. My name is Alan Bebchik, and I'm gonna, going to be speaking about payments in the air charter industry today. So we say that uh, the fintech revolution is ready for takeoff. So why is it just getting ready for takeoff and not flying at uh, cruise speed? So there are a few challenges that uh, we see in the industry that I, I would like to set the stage before we go into the, the conversation. First of all, the nature uh, of how payments needs to happen, the speed of the payment uh, needs to happen very, very fast in the industry. So about 30% uh, of trips, uh, they, uh, they get sourced in the last 72 hours. When we look at uh, Air Charter, we also are dealing with large uh, dollar amounts for the each uh, trip. So the average trip costs about $22,000. And then when we take into account that the industry has low volumes, about uh, 400,000 trips per year, then there are not a lot of uh, providers that want to go in there and, um, and plug an out-of-the-box solution. So that's why uh, at Paynor we, we are working to solve this challenge. And we're not the new kids in the block. We've been doing this for the past five years with Paynord and with Avino as a company for the past 20 years. So really quick to go over uh, the agenda for today. So we're gonna be discussing some trends we see in the payments industry. We're going to be discussing some of the pain points and the challenges uh, that we hear from our members in terms of payments. And then we're going to uh, finalize sharing how we're solving these challenges and how we're making uh, payments seamless for the industry. So I'm gonna uh, share a few examples of uh, great payment experience and I think all of you are familiar. Uh, one is, for example, Uber. What do I like about Uber? You can get your phone, you call for a, for a car, they pick you up, and then you know exactly how much it's going to cost you and you don't have to pay anything until service is rendered. Imagine if we could do something similar for Air Charter. Another uh, great uh, transaction experience is with Amazon Go. So recently I was on a trip to New York. And I saw one of these Amazon Go stores and I wanted to uh, go check it out and see what the bus was all about. And it was really seamless experience. All you need to do, download their app, you scan to get into the store, you can uh, grab any items you want, you can grab a drink, a cereal bar, you walk out, you don't need to take out your credit card, you don't need to take any cash, you don't need to talk to any cashier, payments just happen. Third uh, example, Venmo. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Venmo, but I use Venmo a lot. If I need to split payment with, with a friend, with a family member, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mobile application that you can transfer funds instantly with a touch of a button. So now, these are some experiences that I think are, are really good payment experiences, but let's look uh, at the financial industry overall and what trends do we see. So if we look at Sensor Tower, we see which one are the top download apps in, uh, in the last uh, few years in the United States. So when we look at uh, four years ago, 2015, we see that uh, usually the retail banks were what people were into. We see Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, so not a lot of in, in disruption. When we fast forward to 2016, we start to see some of the fintechs starting to, to challenge some, some of the incumbents. So a good case here is Credit Karma. So they are not a, a jack of all trades. They don't do everything and anything related to payments, but they focus on solving one pain point and they do that really, really well, which is giving you access to your credit score. So instead of having to pay $100 to Equifax or the other agencies, they allow it to use it from your phone. And then when we start to fast forward to uh, 2017, then we start to see the emergence of what we call more of the FinTech disruptors. Uh, and all of these are peer-to-peer -peer, uh, payments. So we see the PayPal, the Cash App by Square, the Venmo, and in 2018, uh, pretty much the same. So what, what have happened uh, even recently in uh, 2019? So we see that the same applications still uh, remain on top. 
And then none of the banks are, are even in the top five, none of the traditional uh, retail banks, but we see Cell starting to emerge. So Cell is the uh, payment platform that all the banks roll out in the United States. So if you need to make a payment, for example, when I need to pay my accountant for my taxes, I don't send her a check or, or cash. I go to Cell, I type uh, her phone number, and money goes uh, to her bank account. So what, what's, what's some commonality from all these payment experiences? They are mobile, they're unseamless, and they're very easy to use. You're making payments, you're transacting in commerce, but you're not actually realizing that, that uh, you're making a payment. Transaction just happened. So we see that the financial industry is changing. We're going mobile, we're, we're seeing disruption. But the way we handle payments in business aviation hasn't changed. So we still are pretty much, we have two main ways of paying for air charter, credit cards and wires. And there hasn't been any, any, any disruption, any new offerings uh, recently. But that's changing. So before we tell you into what, um, what we're bringing to market, let's see what are some of the pain points that we see the industry still has, what are some of the challenges uh, our members are expressing, and how we're solving for these challenges through Painter. So let's look at first at the end client. So who we call the end client? We call the end client wh whoever is flying uh, for air charter. So what are some of the pain points they face? First of all, uh, they still need to f do a lot of things uh, on paper. So if they, they get sent a, a contract, they are asked to uh, print it, sign it by hand. Sometimes they are even asked to send it via fax. Uh, so a lot of uh, inefficiencies for them. They also need to deal with paying uh, high fees for the payments they use. If they want to use a credit card, uh, sometimes they, they might get charged as high as 5% uh, fee to process a credit card. Uh, and so not a lot of option for them and definitely not a great experience. So now if we look at uh, charter operators and charter uh, brokers, what are some of the challenges we see with them? Uh, so again, we, we listed a lot, but I'm going to highlight maybe a few of the, the ones that I think are more important. So one of the challenge is related to risk and fraud. Uh, so wire fraud is uh, it's not, doesn't happen at all, but it can happen. Uh, so people are spoofing emails, sending fake invoices to o operators or, or to brokers. And if someone sends uh, the wire instructions to a fraudulent account, then good luck recovering those funds. That's one of the issues. Another issue is human error. So you could have a person sending the payout, and if they type the wrong details for the wrong operator, or they, they, they send the, the wrong dollar amount for the trip, then uh, wire is out, and then um, funds are gone. So we heard cases of uh, brokers paying out the wrong operator for a trip, or paying the wrong amount, so that, that's definitely happening. Other, uh, other issues that, um, that we hear from members are related to uh, notifications and how they bring their team into what's, uh, what has been paid. So until money is disbursed, operators don't fly. So they need to be notified as soon as the payments get processed. And, and that's one of the, the challenges we see in the industry. And another challenge is that brokers and operators, they don't have good bargaining power. So if they need to process credit cards, they need to process wire, they need to go and find a vendor for each of these different solutions. They cannot always get the best rate. They cannot always get the best offering. So some, those are some of the challenges we see. So then tying it back together, so how are payner, how are we bringing together the base uh, payment experience element that we get to experience from end consumer to the industry. So we talk about Amazon Go and how uh, they offer frictionless payments. You just make a payment without even taking out your card, 
uh, without talking to really anyone. We talk about Venmo, which you can send payments peer-to-peer, uh, 24-7, -peer, 365. And we talk about Uber, that you, could, uh, you only pay for a trip after service rendered. So we're bringing all that into Paynote. Uh, and what's our vision? A connected industry with seamless payment between members and end clients. So with Paynote, uh, what we're rolling out uh, very, very soon, as early as uh, end of the year or Q1 of um, 2020, we're bringing a full uh, solution. So we're going to have the credit card uh, offering with all the major credit card, American Express, Visa, and MasterCard. But most importantly, we're rolling our wire component to it. So what do we mean by, by, by a wire component? Once the, the, the flows are sitting inside the pay, pay not platform, a broker is going to be able to pay an operator, no, no matter the country that they are, instantly with a click of a button. So we can do 24-7, 365 payments in any currency anywhere in the world. And we think with that, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to remove the friction in payment so brokers and operators can focus on what they do best, which is provide uh, excellent uh, flying experience to their members. So thank you for listening.